A recent study released by UCLA's Williams Institute estimates more than 9 million Americans are gay, lesbian, or bisexual, a number equivalent to the population of New Jersey. But the study's author says solid numbers are still hard to come by because surveys about health and social characteristics don't usually ask about sexual orientation. This is especially true in the world of sports. In professional football, only three men have come out after they left the game. The first to ever do so lives here in Seattle. His name is Dave Copay, and we think he's someone you should know. Evans Pool at Seattle's Green Lake. At least three times a week, this is where you'll find Dave Copay. He swims laps back and forth for about an hour. At almost 69, the former pro football player still pushes himself to stay in shape. It's really uh, to keep me so I can eat anything I want. <laughs> These days, Dave Cope says the swimming is his therapy. It's therapy for a public life that's been memorable, challenging, and most definitely groundbreaking. It's much better than going to a therapist. I finally figured out that you just have to do it yourself, you know? And that's what he did. In 1960, Dave Copay was a highly recruited running back out of Notre Dame High, a Catholic school in Sherman Oaks, California. He would eventually come to the University of Washington to play for the Huskies. Dave was Big, strong, powerful runner, a uh, really good blocker. Ron Medved was one of Copay's teammates. He was a great teammate. Was he hard-nosed? Hard-nosed, yeah. While physically tough on the football field, off it, Dave Copay was struggling mightily with himself and his sexual identity. Well, I knew you know and you don't know. He dated girls and took photos with the homecoming queen. Still, none of it felt right. Copay knew he was a homosexual, but in that time, place, and in his football world, he dared not talk about it. He didn't know what to do, and he didn't know how to handle it. I wouldn't let it come to the surface, so to speak, you know. Um, so I knew um, at a fairly early age. Copay's turmoil over his sexual identity started to affect his performance on the football field. He was a starter as a sophomore, but was benched as a junior. He bounced back in his senior season with a breakout year. I was a little light in the shoes, maybe, you know? I mean, I, I was naturally not the tough guy. And um, once I learned that, then I was elected co-captain and, and we, you know, we, we fought, we, we competed. Cope became an All-American running back that season, leading the Huskies to the 1964 Rose Bowl, where he scored the team's only touchdown in a 17-7 loss to Illinois. Later that year, Cope began his NFL career with the San Francisco 49ers, playing there three seasons before being traded to the Detroit Lions. In Detroit, he was befriended and protected by the team's leader, all-pro defensive tackle Alex Karras. Karras seemed to know right away Copay's secret. I know he told me he knew, you know, and it totally freaked me out. I mean, I was scared to death that he was going to, you know, blow my secret. And yet I didn't think anybody could accept it because um, I wasn't accepting it. And it, But Alex did. He could care less. A very straight, very heterosexual guy. After suffering a serious knee injury, Copé was released by Detroit. He rehabilitated the knee and was picked up by the Washington Redskins and legendary coach Vince Lombardi. And he was a very fair guy. He treated everybody, you know, toughly. I sometimes think Coach Lombardi knew maybe everything. I, I, I don't know. I think, I like to think that, you know. He had a, a brother that was gay. Copé's years with the Redskins would be eye-opening as he found he wasn't alone. He would learn the team's assistant general manager and the sports information director were also gay. Then there was Jerry Smith, 
an old pro tight end and a Lombardi favorite. I wasn't told that he was gay, but I was told him, Dave, you're going to really like this fellow because he's so much like you. Smith and Copay had a brief affair. And after that, we never ever got together physically again. It was always we just talked about what we had done. At least we were able to talk about it then. And I had a, you know, a confidant. Jerry Smith played 13 years for the Redskins that included one Super Bowl. He never came out publicly that he was gay. He died from AIDS in 1986. Dave Copay went on to play pro football for nine years. Eight were in the NFL with five different teams. His final season was in the World Football League. He finally retired in 1973. A couple of years later, after reading an article about gay athletes that quoted anonymous sources, an angry and frustrated Dave Copay decided it was time to come out. He wanted to give a name and face to a real gay athlete. So he gave an interview to a Washington, D.C. newspaper. His revelation that he was gay and that gays were in pro sports sent shockwaves through the sporting world. After that, uh, you know, all hell broke loose. And everybody and my family was really disappointed with that, you know. And I knew how hard it would be, but it was like, this is my life. I've got to live my own life. I've got to stand up and be the man that I think I could be. By becoming the first professional athlete in a major team sport to come out, Dave Copay became an instant icon and activist in the gay community. In 1977, the Dave Copay story was published and became a bestseller. His life literally became an open book. Four or five different stops on a, on a, a tour, and it was, it was really, really hard. Um, but I never said to myself, gee, I wish I hadn't done this, because I, I couldn't done, I couldn't say that to myself. That, that, there was, that wasn't a reality. But a reality Copay had to face was that he would no longer be involved in sports. He wanted a coaching career, but by coming out, he would never get the opportunity. I mean, it has not been easy being Dave Copay. I mean, I think there's moments when he's uh, honored and and uh, he's acknowledged for you know being the first and you know f for for you know being a pioneer. But I think there's a lot of a lot of time that's tough for Dave, and so I think that that's where the courage you know has to kick in. While always willing to speak out. Copay eventually lowered his profile. He wanted a more normal life, so he took a job at his uncle's flooring company in Los Angeles, which served a large gay clientele in Hollywood. They became very, very loyal customers once they knew who I was, too. After retiring, Dave Copay moved back to Seattle. In doing so, he decided to give back to students at the University of Washington who were like him and many others. He pledged a million dollars to the school's Q Center, which provides support for gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender students. Do you think that it's easier to come out today? Well, you would think it would be easier to come out because certainly when I came out, it was um, it was crazy how bad it was. Um, it was, uh, and that's one of the reasons I did come out. While Dave Copay is thankful that progress has been made in many areas, he and others are disappointed that in all the years since he came out, few have been willing to do the same in professional sports. You know, he's been out there all by himself for the most part. If we would be today and look back, you know, 35 years ago and say, Dave, you're still pretty much the only guy, I, I think we would have found that hard to believe. And after all these years, Dave Copay still wonders why as well. Maybe the whole thing was Dave Copay needed to be around to be able to still do interviews like this and to talk about it and just to be around to wow. be the figure. Um, time out on that one. Uh, thank you.
Besides Dave Cope, two other NFL players to come out are Roy Simmons, who played for five years, and Asera Tuaolo, who played nine years in the National Football League.